Um, All right, man. Thanks. Thanks, coach. Of course, my friend. Yeah, it's so good to see you. Uh, it's good to see you, too. First and foremost. Do you just want me to kick it off and, and get rolling? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, go right ahead, coach. Awesome. Well, first of all, thank you so much, uh, Coach Toro and FCA Hawaii. I am jealous of you guys. We're about to go to a uh, graduation outside, and it's uh, it's a little bit more Alaska than Hawaii here tonight. So we're going to see how that goes uh, upcoming here. So I'm very thankful and honored to have uh, Coach Toro invited me on uh, to talk talk ball with you guys. And I love the state of Hawaii, so uh, you guys are near and dear to my heart. Um, let me... Go ahead and get my screen going. Um, let's present here. I'm going to be going back and forth from this screen to the huddle so you guys have video to take a look at. Um, but here we go. All right. So uh, the presentation, deal them up, an odds-based approach to creating informed feel. I think um, one of the most important things you can do when discussing coverages and uh, the mindset with kids is, Number one, realize that you're dealing with kids. You're dealing with kids on both sides of the ball. Sometimes the kids on the other side of the ball are going to give you keys that are contrary to what you're teaching your kids. And you're also running into really good defensive coordinators who disguise things really well. Um, and I think that one of the most important things to understanding is that we're going to get as close to exactly knowing the coverages as maybe a really good hand in poker if I want to play that hand or not. Um, and so... Also, you're going to see there's kind of a play on the words of deal here. Um, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to create what I call an informed feel. I actually don't call it. Disclaimer right off the top. A uh, ton of uh, our stuff we get from the R4 system guys who are amazing. And then the Tony Franklin system. And we've and, and, and whatever resources we have. You know, you guys in Hawaii, you know, um, it's, it's difficult to clinic up. You can't just visit 10 colleges on a, on a West coast tour. And so for us, I know we've been, we've been uh, interacting with different businesses and different, and different, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, the consultants. And so that's been a really big part of our game is just, if we're going to get better, you know, the knowledge sometimes costs. And, and I've been, I'm a proud uh, uh, payer of money to both the Tony Franklin system and R4. I think they deliver phenomenal products. Coach Franklin, a really good guy. And a lot of the guys I've met in the R4 world have been awesome. So not a paid advertisement, but I really do like what those guys do. So here's a disclaimer right off the top. Um, I have this clip from Star Wars. I'm a big Star Wars nerd. So we, we got to show the clip from Star Wars here. Uh, this is an important one. The plan to be first of will soon be back in our hands. Don't be too dull with this technological terror you constructed. It doesn't destroy a planet. It's insignificant next to the power of the force. All right, so Darth Vader giving us some wisdom. The, the ability to destroy a planet is insignificant. So I, I reworded it because I knew he was really talking to me. He was really talking football. Don't be so proud of this technological terror you've constructed. The ability to Chalk up a press man winner is insignificant next to the QB's confidence in coaching under pressure. By far, details taught by the quarterback, taught by the receivers, taught by the running backs, taught by the O-linemen, and pressure placed on them in practice trumps most scheme. We're going to talk scheme. I love talking scheme. I love talking details even more. And so I, I'm, I'm hardwired that way. And, and, and we at West High School – it's all about details and putting our guys under pressure during practice. So um, we're a progression reads team, and we got that from R4. Their first read is called the rhythm route. So you're going to hear me say that a lot tonight. Uh, the second read is called a read route. The third read is called a rush route. Uh, that could be also a hot route in certain situations. We use the term, R4 uses the term rush because if the quarterback's rushed, it should be open at any time in his drop back stem. Uh, and then release is to run as either a scramble drill, or if you got a running quarterback, let's get that get, uh, guy downfield and rolling. Um, some key things make up how these routes fit in. And this is all going to come together as we look at coverages, but it's just so important. A rhythm route is the first read in your progression, the first route in your progression. It's tied to the last step in the drill. So certain rhythm routes work with certain drop back footwork. So a 10 yard stop 
for us would be a three yard, a three step, um, no hitch throw balls out certain posts. Um, if it's quick game, like a stick route, a stick route, we do, we call it a two step. It's really a one step, but a one step from gun would marry up with our stick route. That's the rhythm route. It's tied to that. It can't deviate from that. Um, if you get to the end of your drop and you have not gotten feet hot, ready to throw and ball out, then you have to move off that route. So we're a progression read team. I think is really important to talk about right up front. Secondly, is that the read routes, the second read, this is a get open route. You want to put your, uh, your, bat, your, your, your backyard football all-stars at this read route. You know, this is the route where the, the sort of under athletic tight end can go out and get open. You can put a kid in that just plays recess ball really, really well. He's going to get open. Somebody's natural at it. That's generally how you want to design your route system is, is to get that guy in there. The rush routes open at any point. These are going to be things that, you know, often are like back out, stuff like that, um, that can be thrown either first or hot, however you want to look at it. We don't use the word hot. Um, we use the word rushed. So if you're rushed and you can't hit your rhythm, you can hit your rush route and then release to scramble and go. I want the quarterback's mind pretty empty on game day. The more he's thinking about, the slower he's going to be. Uh, as coaches, I think we can uh, – we're, we're going to get to the card analogy here in a second. We can be playing poker. I almost want the, the quarterback playing blackjack. Um, I want him to, to have a simple count, yes, no, versus the coach is thinking about maybe some of these other factors that are going on to set that quarterback up in the best situation. And it's a partnership, and it's a partnership based, again, on the details that have been established in practice. So – we asked, we, as coach, I want to know really two questions. I kind of added one in after the fact, after I made this and realized I really should have asked it, but is it man or is it zone? And the second question that should be on here too, does the defender have help or no? Okay. Man or zone, help or no. And that's how we're going to kind of help. That's how we work through it with quarterbacks. They get this presentation. This is the presentation we use to give the quarterbacks. Um, and when we talk to a quarterback about what is open, we're talking about uncapped. That means there's nobody in the way of, there's nobody, hips are in an angle to attack, uncapped space to the route side. So that means if I'm a receiver running a post route, the quarterback is looking deep to the inside of that receiver. And if there's somebody deep and inside uh, with their hips in a position that they can make a play, that is capped. That route space is not open. So so how what, why why do we care about man zone again it tells the quarterback route side space helps them get an understanding of what what is open okay so that's important so how do we tell if it's man or zone and this is really important um we use what we call context clues that's a hand i want to play right there right pocket aces but sometimes we don't know what we have uh, in our hand and hopefully we've done the work in film, but what I want to do is give you some hacks that we use for lack of a better term. I hate that term. It means that you haven't done the discipline to acquire something. Um, but some of the tricks we use to uh, identify a man or zone, and we're going to go through different positions across the field and how we do that. So first is the whole player. The whole player to us is the slot defender. And here's where the deal comes in. I, when we watch film, we watch film. And the number one question I ask is what's the deal? What's the depth, eyes, angle of hips and leverage of that guy? I did not make that up. That's R4. Thank you guys. Um, it is really, this is really, really good because when you have a whole player, it, cornerbacks can, can lie. Okay? They, they can lie sometimes. Safeties can rotate. A whole player low down in the box with his eyes on the quarterback is probably either blitzing or he's going to be in a zone coverage. A whole player with his eyes buried on the slot receiver is probably in man coverage. Again, it's not a certainty. You're not going to necessarily win a hand because you have pocket aces, but with uh, some more information, we can accelerate how we teach our quarterbacks to make sure that they can pick up some things. So right now the quarterback's thinking, Right now, he's thinking, eyes are buried on me. 
So it is probably zone. Eyes on QB. And let's watch what happens. What this does, this context clue allows the quarterback to make really a pretty remarkable throw that I would not advise even, but I'm not the guy pulling the trigger on Friday nights. And I think there's a certain amount of free play we give our quarterbacks when they feel good about the situation. So right now he feels that we have some type of zone, even though the cornerback's eyes are buried on that outside guy, he sees that the slot receiver or the slot defender, his eyes are working into a collision type technique, like a cover three type look. So knowing it's cover three, even though this DB has turned his back and is in more of a man, man coverage, what, what we're running here is we have a post coming from number one. And so what would take that post away would be if this DB bailed, okay, the whole player, he's too low. He's, his depth is too low. But we have a safety you can't see on screen. So the, quote, the quarterback, fairly certain that it's some type of zone and that he's going to have this empty space just has to hold the safety with his eyes and confirm that it's a true zone. And now this is why it's kind of sketchy for the quarterback. I would have said the ball needs to be out sooner. He breaks from the timing a little bit. He gets his feet hot for a second and then lets the ball go. But as he lets the ball go, it is tight to the safety and maybe a better safety makes a play on this. Again, the, the quarterback has to be watching film. Coach has to be watching film and give the quarterback the free reign to do this. Quarterback delivers a ball in between the corner and the safety. I'll show that again. One, two, three. He puts his feet hot, which slows it down just a little bit, but he gets it above the safety who came down a little low. Again, he read that it was zone coverage based on the eyes of the whole player. And he knew that if he froze the safety, he could come back and make a good strike to that post route. So this is where that informed feel is starting to be born, where we're starting to get, get at the heart of that. So just like in poker, sometimes you're not sure what you have. You're not sure about your cards. Um, and so I call this the turn in the river. Okay, so as we we're, as we're have more cards on the table with more information, more information reveals itself at the end of the quarterback's drop. And what I would encourage is, as you watch film and you really want to figure out what coverages we're seeing, we want to um, pause, the, pause the shot at the end of the drop and then ask the question, what's the deal? So in this video, uh, we, when we scouted this team or when we played this team after the fact, we're, we're kind of unsure here. This guy appears to be in maybe zone. His hips are in. There is a safety you can't see off the screen here. This guy looks like his eyes are buried on the slot. It's a little deep. Okay, so we're not, we don't know what the cards in our hand. So what we do is then we accelerate and we pause the video at the end of the quarterback's drop. This happens to be a slot fade concept. And we wanted to work it to the guy who circled in green because we felt that our slot receiver, he was one of the fastest players on our team. And we knew that he could just run by that kid pretty consistently. We just happened to have that speed that season. And so what was left to somewhat of a like informed feel, we think we're in cover one. We're pretty sure we got the matchup we want. The quarterback, as soon as he saw the eyes buried on that uh, slot receiver, I'm sorry, on that slot defender, the whole defender, the quarterback took what was informed feel, and now it's confirmation. It's time to let the ball go. So let's go ahead and take a look at that play as well. So here we go. Here's the quarterback. He drops back. He puts it up. Puts the ball well to the outside. Great pitch and catch. Another thing to note, and we're going to get to safeties here in a second. Safety, again, was playing over ball. And because safety was playing over ball, the quarterback knew how much space he had out there. He also knew that he could confirm it was man because the cornerback rolls up. He sees that. So just by keying his rhythm route, which was a fade, and he's looking for uncapped space, he sees uncapped space to the rhythm, lets it go, and we score a touchdown. So pretty good deal. Quarterback and receiver, again, informed feel. As cool as it is to chalk that up, we're going to talk about that Darth Vader quote here in, in, at the end of this thing. So it doesn't always go the way you want it. All right. 
context clues. Let's talk the safeties because I just kind of just brought it up. I'm all about hash relation and depth. Where is he playing? And this kind of goes back to the first question. Man or zone? And does, does the defender have help? Okay. So in this case, this safety, he's the one eye safety. He's the only guy. Middle field's closed. We, we, we've learned that. Um, our context clues are telling us this is some type of one high look, cover three, man coverage, cover one. And our question is, can he help his, the cornerback or the slot defender, the whole defender. And the answer is not, not really because he is middle field. Uh, it's going to be a harder help for him on this play. Let's go ahead and take a look at this play in wine because this one actually opens some more things for us. So here's the actual, here's the actual clip. You see, and again, cornerbacks lie. This might, I don't even care necessarily. Uh, if it's man or zone to some degree, I got to be really careful about this. If we know we have a personnel mismatch and there's no help, um, a five yard cushion on one of our best receivers of the season is just not going to be enough when the safety's in the middle of the field, only playing at 10. He has no help. We, ha we have a good feeling about our guy. It's very covered. And this is where I want to be really careful because cover three can be beaten just as easily as cover one by that outside guy even though in high school, the corners that's supposed to be deep. I think that's really important is it's always, it's always kids always think kids. So here we go. Here's the shot. Uh, quarterback three-step drop feet hot a little bit gets away because he's in the boundary puts the ball where it needs to be to the outside shoulder. Great throw by the quarterback. Great catch by the receiver safety is in nowhere that he can help help him. And we feel good about just running by this. And in fact, I would even say this, uh, sometimes you'll get these guys with cover three with inside leverage, hips and sides, stuff like that. You just run right by them, depending on how they're, they're coached and what we see. Again, here's that clip from behind. Um, you can see the safety has in no way can help with a fade. And actually, look at the seam. The seam was wide open as well. The, the, the quarterback was, was reading outside in, in this case. That's just what he felt. Um, I might go back and, hey, I'm not the quarterback, but looking at the demeanor of the whole player, and the one high safety that can't help really down the seam. All that guy can do right now is stop a, stop a post or something coming from, coming from number two to the field. He's very, very little help in the boundary. Quarterback sees that. Probably, like I said, could have pulled the trigger on the seam, but he makes a, a, a pretty good throw to the outside receiver. So it wasn't even perfect, right? It wasn't even read right. But again, you're starting to build informed feel, and we knew our guy in that situation uh, was going to be the winner uh, based on all things being equal. Again, it's funny because a lot of these are, are my old school. I used to go to service high school, so it's funny that some of these shots that are, we're going against are my old school. Um, more information. You think you have a good deal going on. You think that your, uh, your cards are good. It's time to play this hand. So where's the safety off the hash? He certainly looks like he can help on the outside. But there's some other things going on. Uh, we have to consider what is his run game responsibility potentially? What is his demeanor? Again, deal. What's the deal? So when we look at this clip, a uh, uh, different clip, same team, but different clip, different year, we stop it at the end of the quarterback's three-step drop. And what we see is the safety, eyes are still in the backfield, hips are roughly square um, to the line, he really is going to have a tough time correcting. This is one of uh, our fastest guys on the track team. He's going to have a tough time correcting and getting over top of that. What started off is looking like a double coverage bracket type look ends up at the three step at the end of the three step drop. And we ask, what's the deal? We can clearly see this cornerback is in some type of man. We can clearly see that the safety is in some type of zone. And we feel with our fastest guy, we can get over the top of that. So let's take a look at that. So again, the quarterback comes up, he sees, we have a pretty low set. By the way, his deal pre-snap is pretty low. He's below the hard deck. The hard deck is uh, we're usually 10 yards is what we, what we, what we uh, called the hard deck for us. Uh, we see the corner's eyes are buried here. It's a context clue. It does matter. We'll get into that in a second, but what really matters right now is that safety. He should be able to help deep, but as the quarterback gets to his third step drop, 
he can now confirm that that safety is still hip square. He's not going to be able to just magically flip and go backwards against one of our fastest guys. Quarterback actually holds the ball a little long, puts the ball up to one of our fastest guys. And again, we're able to defeat whatever coverage this was. Um, I think that's important. And sometimes, you know, you, you don't even know what kids are playing. Uh, is this some type of cloud man? It doesn't matter. And I think that that's really crucial. It's about what the kid can throw and catch. So if our kids can throw and catch better than their kids can defend, uh, that's really good. Now, again, we've given the quarterback context clues. So it's not just totally blind. Um, if you got a pair of aces and you had no idea how to play the game of poker, that wouldn't mean anything to you. Our quarterback sees that this safety is low. We saw that he has a tendency um, to be really low. And we felt like this is a good thing for us. We can take a shot. This is actually the first play of the game. Um, let's come back to this shot and take a look at some other things. So again, we have a corner in our, this corner appears to be in man. His eyes are buried, but again, corners can cheat. They can look at you and they can turn their eyes. They can press bail. Corners can deceive you. Whole players are really the truth tellers. Safeties are the second most truth tellers, even though they can spin and rotate, they still tell truth. Um, and so for, for us, uh, I really want to, you know, context clues here. This looks like man coverage and this looks like a safety who cannot help. So man, that's a check mark for us. We like that matchup. Safety can't help. That's a good deal for us. Okay. So the other context clues that emerge then are the line too. So like the end man in the line of scrimmage services playing us here in a tight front. Um, and it's more of like a 30 stack type front 58. We know based on, based on uh, film and the context of this game, this guy is not a drop back defender. This guy is a lineman who just happened to get the lucky straw drawing and, and he gets to be the guy that stands up, comes off the edge. Every lineman wants to stand up, right? I don't get it, but they do, right? Every line wants to stand up. So 58 gets to be the guy who stands up. We have two, uh, Three techs, four eye type looks come that are inside leverage on our tackles. If I'm a quarterback or an O lineman right now, I'm thinking probably something is coming from somewhere as the force player. I'm guessing 58 is going to be a force player, but now there's no force player to the boundary as well. And so I highlighted the safety because to me, a safety being at nine yards deep without a force player on his side indicates this guy might have some run responsibility. Um, and actually, we were able to run the ball this night as well. Um, uh, the service, service played really hard, by the way. Um, good team. Uh, but we were able to run the ball. I think that was one of the things we were able to pick up on is that the safety had to come downhill. And if you're going to run this tight front, you got to have these safeties that can run. So, again, we had a better idea that the safety was going to be in, um, you know, the he's not in conflict. Um, but certainly, I, I don't know who the force player is in this exact situation. Um, so let's go back to that clip one more time and watch it from the end zone. And you can kind of see, and it's kind of tilted. That's, I tried to tilt it on the deal. I don't know if you guys got the high pod tilt issue, but we, uh, we'll get it. We'll get it squared away. Um, all right. So, and, and hats off to our, hats off to our right tackle here. He actually identifies that quarterback should be seeing it too. The right tackle. He, he realizes that this guy is not a linebacker necessarily. He is, he is coming off the edge. And he, they do a great job uh, getting to it. He lets them to the inside. The technique wasn't good, but he did identify it. And again, you see that number four is in a horrible position to try to play a deep ball that's running by. His hips are flat. His eyes are in. And this is going to be a win for us. Ball could have been out a little sooner. That might have been a touchdown, to be honest. All right. So what I want to do now is go over. That's the context clues. Zone or man, do they have help or not? And so I want to go over the different coverages. This is exactly what I would teach our quarterbacks. And, and um, it's, it, it is, I think, the most important things to know for a quarterback. There are many other ways to look at this. Um, there are many other ways to teach this. This is just how we do it with our guys. And, again, our priority is on the quarterback's details and confidence and his ability to, to make the throws that he knows he can make. So cover one, what are our context clues? We have a single safety that's above the hard deck. The whole defender's eyes are fixed on the slot. We've talked about that. Why use cover one? It's man up. 
everybody's accounted for. The middle's closed. You're not giving away a, a, an easier post route down the middle of the field. You can blitz up to six. Weaknesses, mismatches of receivers breaking away. So I put cover one away. Some of this comes from R4. Some of this comes from us. When you see cover one, we think away. What's your one cut to break away? Is it a fade to run by somebody? Or is it an out cut? One cut to break away. Um, and that should be your rhythm route is one cut. Your read routes won't settle. Your read routes will keep running, um, whatever they're running, whatever they happen to be in your system. And so often the, the mismatch here is going to be on a receiver on the strong safety or maybe a linebacker. Uh, it can be exposed by motion. How do they shift? The motion is going to uh, force the shift. So let's watch a few successful cover one plays that we had. This first one, we had a uh, quarterback went down beginning of the year. So we had to get a new quarterback, took a receiver who played quarterback his whole life um, at, at lower levels and, and Pop Warner. Um, and these guys went on to go win the state championship. So it was a pretty cool deal. Uh, but number 12 here, we're just going to, this was like game three or four he was in. So we like to sprint him out. We're going to run a little, we call it Seattle. It's actually more like post uh, out. And so he, we're looking because we, we're thinking it's man coverage, all right? In cover one, we do know there's a safety. We do know we're in the red zone. Quarterback's going to be rolling left. We feel really, really good about this out cut. Quarterback gets the ball out, the out cut. And now you have a linebacker on what would become the Gatorade player of the year. So, again, designing the play in a way that benefits your guys. The Gatorade player of the year makes it, makes it look too easy. He was a really good football player. Again, I'll show that again. one cut away from the defender. So cover one away. That's how we think about that. Cover three looks a lot alike, um, but the difference is going to be in uh, how the, the linebackers play, how the whole players play. Um, single safety still above the hard deck. Whole defender's eyes are usually, oh, this should be fixed on QB. Quarter, the uh, whole defender's eyes are fixed on the quarterback. They're looking in now. They're not drilling whole hole through the slot. They're in zone. Uh, what this does is allows potentially eight men in the box. You potentially have an eight man box. We actually played a team that, that played just a three, three stack. They were in fundamental position to take a bunch of stuff away that we had been good at that year. And they played us like they had eight in the box. And it was, it was, it was tough. It was, it was a while ago. And uh, it was hats off to those guys for doing a good job. Anyway, uh, the strong safety is usually the one that comes below the hard deck and plays one of these, what we call hole positions. That's what we call the apex defender in our offense, the hole. Let's go over that again. CBs are usually at or above hard deck. They're a little deeper, but not necessarily. And I'll tell you what, I'm seeing more and more. I couldn't tell you what it was. Um, but my question is, where's the route side space leverage? Can our guy win it? Does that guy have help? And as I watch every film and stop at the end of the three-step drop, I'm asking, what's the deal right now? Why do teams run this? It protects against the big play. It can create that box. And then what are the weaknesses? The seams and the quick game underneath. I'll say this about cover three. If you don't have a quarterback who can throw those seams, the seams can be just, you can bang your head against the wall. Because if you don't have the quarterback who is disciplined under pressure to make that throw in the seam between 18 and 22 yards, it is open on paper, but open on paper isn't always there on Friday. In fact, that can cause a lot of heartache with you on Friday. So you have to test your kids. You have to, have to, have to test the kids. That's one of the things that when we're successful, and I, we're coming off a season where we didn't test our kids as well. You know, COVID and all that, uh, we, we, we probably let play into our heads and we didn't overcome the situation like we could. Um, so we're, we're very much had to deal with that. But let's watch a few of these. Ooh. Oh, there's another, I'm sorry. This is another cover one shot. I did want to show you guys a single breaking round. I'm sorry. This is a little out of order. Quarterback one, two, three, rhythm. And he throws a single breaking out route to the number one receiver to the boundary. And that actually might've been the reason I, I this guy's eyes are inside. I don't even, again, I, I couldn't tell you, but it doesn't matter to me. All right. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we know that he doesn't have help underneath. The route side space has no help. And our receiver and quarterback were pretty good at throwing that. All right. Let's go back to cover three. Now we know we're in zone. Eyes are inside. There's a safety in the middle of the field. 
Um, these guys got deep thirds. We're up in Fairbanks. Whatever the coldest place in Hawaii is, multiply it by a billion. That's Fairbanks. This is not a this is not a tourist destination. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. I'm not. I, maybe I'm speaking mean to the people of Fairbanks. I yeah. You can see the snow. It's tough. Anyway, quarterback throws a perfect seam route. This quarterback absolutely could. He was a scholarship athlete later on. Um, he was pretty good. And notice he does it on rhythm. This is our off our play action. So he catches, meshes with the running back, quick steps, and then he just fires the seam route underneath the safety to a really, really good slot receiver. Um, and the slot receiver houses it. So he's really good. Um, here's another cover three uh, shot. Again, eyes are inside. We're going to see whole players with eyes inside. We're going to see cornerback slightly off. This is a pretty clear cover three picture. Um, quarterback's route combo in this, I believe, is spot, curl, flat. He's reading one, two, but he knows. He doesn't know what all these guys are doing. That's pretty hard, but with the context clues, knowing it's cover three, knowing it's the seam, he's going to accelerate. It's just like playing poker. He's got a hand he likes. He's going to play, and he only confirms one, two, three. He confirms that this guy's hips are going this way. This guy's way too low, and he's going to have a big hole right here. He throws a curl route to, again, one of our better athletes we've ever had here. And uh, and this is a decade worth of footage. We have some stuff from last season. We have some stuff from the last few years. It, it changes here. We get defensive coordinators like anywhere else. Um, and we can't just consistently run the same thing. So we're always trying to adjust. Um, the next thing we got is our cover two uh, stuff. And we don't get a lot of cover two. Kind of rare for us to get cover, straight cover two. But what I'm going to get into a little later here is all these coverages get mixed. Uh, we'll get two to one side. We'll get cover six, two on one side, four on the other. We'll get all sorts of weird uh, two and man match and all sorts of stuff. So we go over this just to kind of start a reference point. It's like, again, going back to the card analogy, it's like learning the, the hands that are going to win. Okay. So that's what we're doing right now with this education. Doesn't mean you're going to get that exact hand. Just here are the hands that win. Um, so again, what are the context clues to cover too? How can I kind of know what I'm seeing? Two safeties above hard deck on hash or wider because they're going to be wide if it's true cover two. A cornerback leverage head up to outside at roughly five because he's trying to redirect a whole player who's apexed with his eyes inside. Uh, why run this? So that you can have five underneath route, or five underneath defenders, especially for a team like us who throws a lot of screen game. This would be good. Uh, maybe uh, depending on how you align your linebackers, you take away some quick game stuff. Uh, but where are the weaknesses? It's deep middle. And now you get in a position where your safeties – are real double movable because they have no help. They don't have another safety help. They are by themselves deep. Um, and even if a corner carries a uh, receiver, generally a whole player won't carry a receiver too. So like a double move from the Y, maybe a corner post, um, those type of things uh, really, and, and high-low uh, type combos can be very difficult for cover two. So this is, uh, when, we, when we think cover two, um, just like in cover one, we thought away. Cover three, we're thinking the seam, the curl to the flat. Sorry, seam, the curl to the flat. Cover two, we're thinking middle of the field to this hole above the corner below the safety. Again, we don't get a lot of actually true two. And so it took me actually some digging to find a shot where we hit a few. Here's a, what we did is we reduced our leverage from our number one to the hash. That brought the corner in with him and gave him a wider just go release. And he was able to get outside of this corner who's supposed to be funneling him inside. And what that did for the quarterback, this was a quick, uh, quick game combo of out and vertical. And the quarterback felt that with the timing of it, he could throw this underneath the safety and he did. And that's a really great cover two hole shot there. Um, again, arm strength. This quarterback was accurate, but not the most arm strength guy. So we reduce that to make the arm strength something that, that uh, could be done. Again, it's all about the kids. There's a theme here. Um, cover four. Four, we're thinking under. 
Um, and so it's going to look maybe like cover two. It can look like cover zero. And this is where I, this is, this is my big thing. There's a lot of times we're watching film. I don't even know after watching a complete game, was that cover four or cover zero? I guess it had some zero principles with the linebackers and then they would do different things. But if we can serve our kids up these context clues, our quarterback, who's a 16 year old boy performing in front of thousands of people of his peers, he has to have a limited amount of information to make it this decision or that decision right now. He's got to play blackjack. So you can play, you can play chess. I'm sorry. You can be playing poker throughout the game we're playing here. You can be playing poker and you can have all the combinations and be counting cards and be thinking about everything based on your film study. We want our quarterbacks knowledgeable, but the quarterback's got to say, hit me or stay. And it's got to be faster than even I just did that. So cover four, um, we want to think under. There is a way that we like to get over top of uh, cover four. Uh, it is usually over top of a safety, the high low of safety, because usually a corner is going to be in an outside leverage position. So we can't make a play in the post. So if we can grab this safety and bring him down somehow, sometimes we can hit some big plays on that. Uh, it's a middle field open coverage. And if there was the biggest tell for me, it'd be where these guys are out on the safe, on the hashes, because they generally are aligned more inside the safeties that is. And so they can actually drive on middle field, uh, middle field uh, open type concepts. They can, they, they can play that. So don't, I'm not a big attack the middle and cover four because those safeties can rally because they have outside help now that they didn't have before. Um, so let's take a look at cover four shots here. So we have, and this is actually gonna get into screen game quite a bit here. Oh, here's, okay. This, this one I just wanna show because it's fun. So I was talking about arm strength. So this quarterback, this is back to cover two. I gotta, I gotta get my shots in order here. This quarterback had tremendous arm strength. And so he just felt he could fit anything through any window. So this is another cover two hole shot, but totally different. Um, again, special athlete. He's a, he's, he, we've never had a quarterback like him before or after. Um, and so he just knew that he, he knew his receivers really, really well. And he knew he could get things, put the ball into the, the gaps and he knew how safeties played. Um, so he felt good about that. But let's go back to cover four, uh, back to the short quarterback. And the reason I keep talking about our guys is again, to understand why we're calling things with certain quarterbacks, it all is about their feel for what they could do. This short quarterback here could throw a post like nobody's business, but he was not going to make that cover two window by any stretch. And so what we were trying to do uh, is set up a high low and go up and grab. This is a really bad drawing. Sorry, guys. We're trying to just run a, a basic shallow concept or, or mills or NCAA, whatever. Um, and we're trying to grab the safety and bring the safety down. We knew he was kind of aggressive. Quarterback feels it. One, two, three. He actually takes a five-step drop. He's got short legs, so I was okay with that. Um, I think that's another thing about your players. They have short legs. Maybe a five-step drop's better than a three for some concepts, some of the deeper concepts. Anyway, short leg quarterback, five-step. Fastest guy in the league. Hips flat. Eyes inside. Quarterback feels good about putting it up over top of everybody. He knew he could throw that ball really, really well. That was his throw. He was really, really proficient at the, the, the boundary post in quarters. So we were able to high-low that safety with the threat of the dig here. The safety had to consider it for a second. Um, and just that one bit of hesitation allowed our, our trackster to get over the top and get a big touchdown against our rival. So I'm going to come back to cover four at the end of this when we get back into screens, because I think it's really, really important to talk screens regarding cover four. Uh, cover zero, then I'm thinking deep to away. So the idea here being, um, this looks like cover four, that service, the, the very first shot I showed back up here, this, this could, uh, I mean, I would consider this almost cover zero with the, he might be manned up on the, on the running back, okay? Uh, that might be this side is not cover zero. Um, this side is certainly sometimes. And so we're going to see these split coverages quite a bit. Uh, but cover zero, uh, we're going to treat like cover one. Um, I don't have a whole lot of cover zero shots, but the because um, we don't really get it a whole lot. But I will go back to this. Uh, this, is, this would be like a cover zero look that we would see. 
Um, this is that, that slot fade that I started the, the uh, presentation off with. We actually later on in this game to get rid of this safety, we just motioned our back out and the safety came down and then it was true cover zero. Um, but other than that, we haven't really seen, it's either cover four or zero and they do different things and we get a lot of man match um, where, and, and, and even some pressures that turn into zero, but there's not a lot of pure zero across the board, but it should be known that, hey, what we do see a lot on television, and, I, and, I, and, and this is, you guys might see this a lot, is if this safety stacks over top of a whole player, that's a context clue that that whole player is blitzing. So be aware of if a safety stacks fairly low, fairly directly over top of a slot receiver, the whole player is probably blitzing. You're probably in man coverage, um, and you, you need to get the ball out quick, pick your guy. Again, if it's man coverage, we're thinking away. What your best guy breaking away, whether that's just with speed, whether that's an outcut, uh, whatever it happens to be, your best guy breaking away. Well, let's go back to cover four. This has been a problem for us in the past. It, uh, it's, it's tricky, right? You're throwing the ball, and all of a sudden, the, the cheating defense puts seven guys back there, and four of them are deep, and the fans want to see you throw the ball deep. And what do you do now? Well, you invest heavily in the screen game. I think the screen game is – Screen game to us is, is as important as the run game um, in our offense because uh, we believe in coaching up the details of the screen game for the blocking, and we believe in coaching up uh, the details for um, the screen route runner and the quarterback's throw. So it puts athletes in space. It creates scheme constraints for the defense. There's certain things, like if you go cover four the whole game, we will just throw screens all game long and be fine with that. Just like, a, you know, the old school coaches are like, oh, we're just going to trap over and over again until you stop it. You bet. This is our trap. This is our power. We just do it over on the sideline. Um, it also forms a really great chance for you and the quarterback to have reconnaissance missions where you can start to watch and see how certain defenders play. If you're confused, is that one or is that three? Is the zero or is this four? It gives you an opportunity to buy some time. So our first screen is fast screen. And we have so many clips of these. I'm just gonna just rip through a few of them, but fast screen basically is catch it, throw it. There you go. The key details to this for the quarterback is it must be completed on the uphill shoulder. So in this shot, it would have to be completed on the X's left shoulder. Uh, the key details for the blocking is they must run flat down the line till they step on that blocker, the receiver's toes almost. He's going to go try to step on his toes. The receiver is going to catch the ball one yard behind the line of scrimmage. We like to have our guys go flat down the line of scrimmage. I actually let them, I say, take, take six inches on the other side of the line of scrimmage. And what that does, that just prevents us running into each other, which can kind of happen. So I just say a shoulder pad width, get over, get over on the other side. Um, and then, for us, this is usually an RPO, and we're just going numbers. So here's three good guys versus two bad guys. We don't count the safety, um, depending. Usually we don't. Uh, but three on two, we're throwing this fast screen 100% of the time, um, and we're relying on Y and H to block, just like we'd be relying on the five up front to block on inside zone. So this would probably be inside zone left, fast screen left. Quarterback looks at it, goes, that is a gift. I'm going to take it. I'm going to throw it. And yes, defenses will try to play games with you and move around. Fantastic. So if you have a play, maybe this is a great opportunity for tempo. Don't allow them to do that. Let's go and take a look at some fast screens here. Um, oh, I got to go back in my panel. Sorry, guys. So our fast screen, again, is probably... This is a really important part of our game. I like to take it to the boundary. Okay, so we're going to run fast screen to the Z receiver. Quarterback is going to catch. He gives a little mesh to hold the linebackers, and he throws. I think we have a better angle from the end zone for this one. Yeah. Again, this is some type of off coverage. The leverage is deep. We think we're in some type of zone. And, again, the blocking uh, by the tight end. Let's talk about the blocking key really quick. Once he gets to over the toes of his, his, uh, the ball carrier, he's going to get wide base. He's going to get hot hands. He's going to look to punch, recoil, punch, and drive. 
just like an O lineman on the end of a fit drive finish type feel where you're going to uh, suck the air out with the hips um, and, and really bury the, bury the block here. So really good job, punch, recoil. I would like to see him recoil a little better, but he does finish, he gets his hips in, keeps two out of the play, two can't make the play. It's a really great job. Um, we love to run into the boundary because it just it's an easy place to hide. Maybe a fullback in the backfield can hide over here and get out and block. It's a much shorter throw. Again, we don't count the safety. We have three guys versus two guys. We feel pretty confident about that. And there we go. And the reason we don't count the safety, now sometimes you got to because he's really, really good. But often we don't just because of distance and he's got to do other things too. Here is another shot. Same exact play. We don't count the safety. We have three. They have two. Quarterback knows it doesn't even matter what the play is. He's throwing the fast screen now. His accuracy and details are important. I would like the ball right there. Whoops. I actually put it where he put the ball. I like the ball maybe more like right here. The number one thing you can't do, cannot throw the ball detail oriented. You have to throw the ball the uphill shoulder. Blockers do a great job getting flat, staying on. He kind of gives it maybe a hold type movement. I don't like, I would have liked to have seen nine suck his hips up more like an old lineman. You get your first punch, you recoil, punch, drive. They do enough. It is a big play for us. Okay. And we'll do one more of these. Um, again, to the boundary, you can throw a field or boundary. Uh, we had a really good blocking receiving core this year. And so this was the, this season that I'm showing, this is a really great job. It's kind of subtle, but by the slot receiver to turn, go flat for five, arrive at what he thinks he's at the ball carrier. Okay. But then he feels, okay. He feels the pressure and he goes and takes the most dangerous man, which was the guy following him. Really great blocking by the X. Um, and we get a first down. Okay, so that is fast screen. That's in just about everybody's offense, but I think it's a it's a crucial part of the run game. So you have to practice it like a run game. It's not lip service. We spend a ton of time practicing screens. And so let's talk about the ones we practice the most, actually. And these are the cage screens. And the reason we call these the cage screens is because they all end up in what we call the cage. And the cage is a five by five box where the receiver catches the ball. And so we are trying to get a lineman out to the cage, a lineman up for the fill on the cage, and a lineman who's going to go back looking for the follow. So you have force fill follow, just like you would on a defensive structure. We're building our blocking structure out of that. So we're out, up, and in. We just use those words. It's a little easier for our guys. We do have a replace rule. So like if the tackle is the out and he gets tied up on the D end, the guard would then go out. The center would go up and the, the other guard would go in. Um, if you have um, one guy, it's like man down, next guy carry on the job, and we all shuffle down one. Um, so let's go ahead and watch a few cage dr drills. And actually, what I really want to show you is, is like our practice film on this, because this shows uh, really the level of detail that we really work on this. Here's, an, here's a cage drill. Um, if you're by yourself, if you don't have the team with you, this is what I recommend. There's your defender. Okay, this is going to be working for the fill. So they club, they release flat for five. Notice they have to go around a cone. That's incredibly vital. Got to do that. They can now, they've worked up their flat for five. They can now work up vertically. They were looking, this is working for the, the, uh, the up defender, just like a receiver, just like you're working through the shoot, just like board drill. My base is wide. My hands are hot. I'm looking to punch. Uh, and then uh, fit drive finish. Uh, uh, really work to get the hips and just smother the man once we've led with the hands. Here we go. Here's the sideline view. This is what, I love this. Okay. So here we go. We are working. We're sim so this is play action for our drop back um, in a sense. It, it's like a draw, I guess you could kind of look at it that way. The O line is going to sell their uh, vertical set backwards. Boom, boom. And I wish they would have sold it a little bit more. They were a little too antsy on this drive to get out there. They work now. We tell the O line to work one yard in front, and we tell the receiver to work one yard behind because in the game, what ends up happening is they end up meeting really, really close. So we just want to separate it just a little bit, and we never really get called for illegal man downfield or anything like that for offensive pass interference, I guess is what it would be. On this type of screen, it's not a fast screen, 
the receiver has to sell vertically. Again, it's a fake. It's your, it's your play action of the drop back and work and come back down the line. He does a good job of that, getting his pad level low. Quarterback, I would have liked to have seen the ball right on the line of scrimmage, directly on the line of scrimmage, which would have been uh, ball out. But what I reason I show this clip is because the flat line right there. There's your flat for five. Uh, we have we also we have a slot receiver. We tell our linemen never trust the slot receiver unless it's absolutely obvious that he's got him blocked, meaning like that guy's out of the play altogether. We never trust the slot receiver block. The O line goes and helps with that slot receiver. We double team. Here comes your up. Here comes your follow. And I wish he would have turned his hips inside and looked, looked back out. Should have coached that up. Here it is again. There's another version of it. Just doing some different things. Things you don't see in Hawaii necessarily. A little bit of snow in practice. And we tell the receivers, the, the teaching tape, the teaching point on our receivers is you catch the ball and you everything you can to work inside the out block and follow the fill block. So I would have liked the receiver to gone inside that to simulate that. Um, and that was to the field. So that's a little tricky. So this is boot screen that I just showed. And this will be kind of the last one we go off. I, I love boot screen uh, because especially if you're in the pistol at all and you're running stretch or you're running, it doesn't really matter what you run out of the pistol. As long as you're just opening up and giving like a, a traditional handoff, um, you can bootleg. That definitely freezes backside in, but if you want to freeze backside pursuit from a second level defender, like a will linebacker, this is a great, great play for us to do that with. Um, so I actually want to go to page screens and actually show some of these. I'll start with boot screen and then I'll go back to jail here and we'll work through this. All right, so this is the first time we ran boot screen. O-line coached by coach Mark Toro here. You better believe it. Uh, so we saw what we were doing is we were running a lot of power. Uh, and because we're running so much power out of I, just one back power, we got a lot of draw from linebackers, okay? So what we did is rather than down block, just keep going on your cage path. Uh, we released a tackle. He would get out there. And so this was, this should, I mean, right here, this should be a bigger play, right? Uh, we miss a guy and it is what it is. We get a few yards and it was like, hmm. But that opened our thinking caps up and we're like, that could be a really, really good play. Um, and this is, I want to show you how we did it totally wrong and scored a touchdown on this. So here we go. We do it again against a team that at the, at the time had won 64 games in a row. Something like that. These guys are really good. Top notch team in the state. Quarterback does not, I'd like to see him sell it better than this. Um, but even with this kind of like just a math fake, like not really that great of a play action fake, you get linebacker bite. That means that that linebacker is going to be out of position to try to make a tackle on this guy. Um, the, the, in this case, we just whiff on the corner. Um, and, or I'm sorry, the, on the whole defender. The whole defender comes down. We should have ID'd ID that as the most dangerous man. We didn't, okay. But the receiver does a good job of doing everything he can to fight to the next lineman, which became the out. Kind of gets weird. And because he does everything he can to fight inside, get around his guy, and then get vertical, works out as a foot race, and that guy was fast, and we scored a touchdown on it. So that was that was like the next time we ran boot screen um, after that first one. So then we ran it this year. Uh, and what we did was we had a lot of – maybe you guys have a, a mobile quarterback or you're going to rodeo lasso too. This guy wasn't necessarily that, but we would run – we had run uh, – rodeo lasso was our sprint out protection. So lasso left, rodeo right. So we ran sprint left and then we had the O-line just run their boot screen path. We didn't change anything for them. We just said, run it like the boot screen. So these guys ran like they were running GT left. The rest of the O-line ran like they were running the cage. So center, I didn't draw it very well. I'm kind of OCD about this stuff. Here comes the center for the out block. We have the backside guard going to the up. And then the backside tackle. Um, how effective is that guy? Eh, not always, but sometimes he gets in there and makes a big block. These two guys are really what makes it happen. And then this, we had the quarterback actually sprint to his left. Um, he probably should have done a few more steps. This allowed our guys to get in good position and then wheel around, throw the screen, and there you see it. Now we have 
pretty good play. So what we did is we basically combined the bootleg screen with the sprint out type move that you might use. So, if, hey, if you're seeing, you know, and then the receivers ran their jail, their fake drop back, he works vertically, comes back, and gives time for the blocking to develop. Um, let's see a few jails in here. So this is now our drop back fake screen. Okay, so we're making it look like a drop back pass. As we do this, you see that the, the safety is dropping deep. Another another uh, coach, Mark Toro, O-line. This was a fun O-line to work with. They're in good position. Great job by the, the slot receiver to stay with this guy. He whiffs. I don't like the whiff. I'd rather see his base wider. Okay, tight hands. But he stays on it, and he's persistent. That type of stuff, it's good stuff. Here's a touchdown. Uh, another one against our rival to the field. If you have a strong arm quarterback and, a, and an athletic O line, you can throw this to the field. Otherwise, you, you, you're limited by the athleticism of your uh, receivers and your O line when you run uh, jail. But this is a great shot of the O line using great rip technique, rip club, sorry. Um, and then going flat for five and just working flat for five and the, the receiver's on a journey because he knows the field, the play has been called to the field. He's going to do everything he can to wrap inside 57. He does, he finds his little niche and now we're just running ISO, all right? So I, we see the screen game exactly like an extension of the run game uh, to us. It's, in, it's that important. We practice it that much. We have dedicated time and practice. It gets as much attention as pass pro and run game. Um, and it is that important. Well, I want to finish on the disclaimer. So um, going back, I said that it doesn't matter how good you chalked up your play. And in fact, what that leads to is a little frustration. Um, and, and, and what I wanted to do is just open myself up and, 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 and honestly accept subpar coaching on my end. Um, we did not create a pressure enough situation for us to be able to complete what we consider wide open. So here we go. We chalked it up perfectly. We got man coverage. We have safety in the middle of the field. He cannot help. So all the questions are like, this is a green light. That's our best receiver or one of our, we have two really good receivers. That's one of our best receivers. It should be a touchdown. Chalked up. Chalk wars. We just won. Quarterback though. Wasn't pushed hard enough in practice, I believe. I believe that, that we didn't put pressure. He didn't have physical pressure. It was, the, it was the game pressure of you have to complete this. There was even an offside that I didn't get. It doesn't matter. Boom. But we have a wide open receiver running down the sideline. It's frustrating. And a great catch by our D-line coach. There you go. And it happens again. Same exact situation. Safety middle field. Let's, let's work through all our stuff, guys. Context clues, this looks like man coverage to me. Eyes inside, I don't know what's going on there. Maybe it's a man match type look. I don't know what he's doing. He's playing some type of zone, I don't know. This guy is some type of man. There he goes, we run by him. Run by him again. No. You can be 100% right, coaches, and you can be 0 for 2. This is what it is. So it comes back to the a disclaimer that – don't be so proud of this technological terror you've constructed. You can create the best offense. It's the ability to be detailed oriented, to be Jimmy's and Joe's oriented, give them the context clues, let them know when they have a really bad hand, let them know when they have pocket aces, let them know what they have as the play unfolds in the time clock dropping back. Let them know here are, here's the, here are the next cards on the table. You have more information. Confirm and throw or move to the next progression. Um, anyhow, that's our coverage stuff and our screen game. I hope you guys got something out of that. I am an open book. If you have any questions for me, my name is Tim Davis. I probably should have put this on the slide originally. Uh, my phone number is 907. 441-1416. My email is davis underscore tim at ask12.org. And a shameless plug, uh, my a former uh, uh, quarterback who actually, I think I had a slide of him on here, but I took it out. 
um, former quarterback of ours, and I, uh, who's now 10 years out of high school, we host a, a podcast. That podcast is called The Backups um, because it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down, how many times you get back up, it's all about. Um, so anyway, that's all my information. Please, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'm sorry that it was a weird night because of uh, graduation and stuff, but I appreciate you guys and what you're doing for the sport of football in a place that I love dearly. So. Coach Toro, do you got anything for me here? I got a few minutes for a, uh, I got a skedaddle. No, I thought it was excellent. Um, <clears throat> I'm glad we recorded it so we can, you know, there's a lot to chew on and to, to get, uh, but I, I thought you did an excellent job. You know, you answered all the, all the things that I was hoping to learn and so now I have access with for you know with this video and stuff I can rewatch it. So I appreciate it, and um, thank you so much, Coach Davis. A groovy man. I will uh, upload this right now. I'll send you the link, and uh, hopefully we'll have it uploaded in the next ten minutes. And and I'll, I'm gonna get it before I go to graduation. So. All right. Yeah. Just uh, send me a text or call me when you when you got it sent. Thanks. Right. Beautiful. Have a good one, Coach. Take care.